Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Peter, if you're new here. Today, we're gonna have a look at the latest, the newly released close-up lens in Nisi's lineup, which has the highest magnification, the 49 millimeter close-up lens. I was sent this lens by Nisi, but I'm not being paid, so I'm gonna be as objective as possible. First, I'm gonna be talking about the attributes, the specifics of this lens, then we'll be taking some test shots in the studio just to ascertain how the magnification changes once this close-up lens is attached, and also how the working and the minimum focusing distances are affected. After that, I'll be showing you some test shots I took in the field, and we'll do a bit of pixel peeping, so let's get started. The 49mm Nisi close-up lens kit comes in a hard shell protective case that features a high quality zipper and a loop. The inside of the case is well padded and there is an extra plastic cap to protect the lens. This kit includes two adapter rings, the 67mm, which I used with both of my test setups, and the 62mm step-up ring. Attaching the close-up lens via the rings to the front element of your lens is quite easy, but when you detach it, try to ensure that you remove the close-up lens together with the adapter ring, as sometimes that might get stuck on the filter thread of your lens. The build quality of the lens is superb, it has quite a bit of weight to it due to its metal construction, the brushed aluminium feels great in the hand, the optical excellence is achieved by the double optical corrective glass, the apochromatic design and the multi-nano coating. This helps with decent color reproduction, advanced resolution, high contrast and virtually eliminates any color fringing when paired with a high quality lens. This close-up lens is compatible with both prime and zoom lenses and the increase in magnification that you can achieve with this 9 diopter lens depends on the magnification ratio of your base lens and also the focal length, the latter being longer, resulting in higher magnification. I've done a little bit of testing in the studio, as I said before, and I used two different setups. Let's start with the Canon 80D paired with the 18-235mm Nano USM kit lens. This particular lens has a maximum magnification of 0.28x and the minimum focusing distance is 39cm at the telephoto end. This is the maximum magnification that you can achieve with this lens, this image was taken without the close-up lens. Once I attached the 49mm lens via the adapter ring, I noticed very heavy vignetting and a kind of keyhole look, which improved slightly when I zoomed into 135mm. You can see that both the minimum focusing distance and the working distance were substantially reduced, especially at the telephoto end. Just in case you are unsure about the terminology, the minimum focusing distance is measured from the subject to the imaging sensor. You can measure this precisely with the help of a little indicator that is usually found on top of your camera body right here. The working distance meanwhile is the distance between the front of the lens and the subject, so it is significantly shorter. The magnification ratio was more than quadrupled to around 1.3 to 1 and even though you will need to crop into the center of your frame, it's still very usable in my opinion. Our second test setup included my new APS-C body from Canon, the R7, and I had the Lao 90mm 2x ultra macro lens attached. Here you can see what the default 2x magnification looks like with this lens. Once I have attached the Nisi 49mm close-up lens, our next objective once again was to find the minimum focusing distance. The quick adjustment macro focusing rail made this very easy. I had already reviewed the NM200S, so if you are interested, you should check out that video as well. I will leave a link in the description. 
the 20 and a half centimeter minimum focusing distance became much shorter as you can see but the working distance is still manageable unless you try to photograph for example extremely skittish insects when out in the field. The magnification ratio was increased by around 60% to approximately 3.2 to 1 which is a decent increase. What I really like about using close-up lenses like this 49mm one is that you can also vary the magnification ratio of your base lens and this kind of versatility and flexibility can come really handy when you try to photograph subjects of different sizes in one session. Here you can see what the magnification is like when the magnification ratio is reduced to 1 to 1 on the lower one 90mm with the 49mm close-up lens attached and this very last shot was taken with the focusing ring turned all the way towards infinity. In this second last segment of our video I'd like to show you several images I captured one beautiful morning in our garden with my go-to lens the Lao 190mm ultra macro on the Canon R7. One of the reasons why I absolutely love macro photography is because one doesn't need to travel to find amazing and unique subjects, just gotta be observant and patient enough and the results will come. Before putting up the more detailed shots taken with the Lao 90mm, I wanted to show you five side-by-side -side comparisons I took with the 18-235mm Nano USM kit lens on the Canon 80D just to further demonstrate the level of increase in magnification you can expect when using this 9 diopter lens. In this first example, which I captured of our blossoming succulent in the garden, you can see so much more detail when I fully zoom in to 100%, the sharpness remains excellent, the micro contrast is great and the colors are saturated without any apparent chromatic aberration. Our second subject is a fly species that belongs to the genus Sepromyza. These are two different specimens but essentially the same size. I was lucky to be able to get this close as they tend to be very skittish. Once again the details on the left are exceptional. In our third side-by-side -side comparison, the image on the right was taken with the Nisi 49mm close-up lens at the maximum magnification. Remember that all of these images were captured at the telephoto end of 135mm. I really liked all the intricate detail that you can see in the compound eyes and the sensory organs when I zoomed in to 100%. Our second last side-by-side -side comparison is of the same green bottle fly species at this level of magnification, even though I shot these at f11, the focal plane only covers about 40% of this specimen from the side, so once again not everything looks sharp due to a limited depth of field. Our last test shot is my favorite amongst these as it clearly shows how much more detail you can expect to capture. This was a very tiny female bronze hopper jumping spider. You can barely spot it on the left but when we fully zoom in you can even see the individual CT, the tiny hairs surrounding this little spider's large forward facing eyes. Even though you would have to crop in when editing these shots, they are totally usable and the quality is pretty good in my opinion. Now let's have a look at more test shots that I took with the Laowa 90mm ultra macro lens including some with very high level of detail. These first three images are of three different social house spiders. I have found three major aggregations and the first two shots were taken at less than 1 to 1 magnification while this very last image was shot at the maximum magnification ratio. Even though the depth of field is quite shallow and stacking would have been preferable, the amount of discernible detail on this specimen is amazing. Our next image is of a fly species. I wanted to demonstrate once again how shallow the depth of field is even though I shot these at f11, only a small section of this fly's compound eye is in focus. The next series of images are of extremely tiny species of bark lice. The first two are of a green colored younger instar and the last three are of an adult specimen that I had found on another piece of bark of our fijoa tree. 
I really like this very last close-up portrait where it was doing some reconnaissance on our outdoor glass table. The next two photos are of another very small subject. These springtails are approximately a millimeter long, almost as small as tardigrades. You can even see the omatidia, the photoreceptor cells that make up its tiny compound eyes. This quirky looking subject is a so-called boatman fly that has a very characteristic movement while walking around on vegetation. The way it moves its wings resembles a kind of pedaling movement. The next two backlit shots show the amazing color reproduction that you can achieve with a high quality lens in conjunction with the Nisi 49mm close-up lens. This leaf curling spider uses a cylindrical shaped leaf to embush its prey. This next extreme close-up is of a very tiny plant hopper species. This plant hopper is polyphagous, which means it feeds on a wide variety of plants and can be a pest to for example banana, citrus or other ornamental plants. Our second last series is of a female bronze hopper jumping spider that I initially found on one of our yakas, then it eventually ended up on my finger and here you can see how tiny she actually was while she was resting on the side of my thumbnail. I left the stacked image for last, even though it's not a perfect stack, the depth of field is acceptable and shows tremendous amount of detail of this beautiful female bronze hopper with a mosquito as her prey. Overall, I'm quite happy with the lens. The build quality is decent, the overall image quality is excellent, especially in the center of the frame and the fall off in terms of sharpness and contrast towards the corners of the frame was quite negligible. If you end up pairing it with a dedicated macro lens that has at least one to one magnification ratio, you will also have to start taking stack shots just to obtain sufficient depth of field, otherwise some images can start looking soft. This depends obviously on the size of the subject as well. There are only a couple of negatives that I can think of. One is the price, I wish it was slightly cheaper. You also have to be aware of the vignetting, especially when you use it with a kit lens such as the 18 to 135 millimeter nano USM that I used on my Canon 80D. This gradually decreases as you increase the focal length and you can also further suppress it by doing a bit of post-processing, but you will definitely have to crop in quite a bit. The level of vignetting is also highly dependent on whether you use a full frame or a crop sensor body. An APS-C body such as the Canon R7 has a crop vector of 1.6x. This will further mitigate this issue. Anyway, this is it for today's video. Feel free to have a look at my other reviews of the 58mm and the 77mm close-up lens kits as well. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and catch you all very soon in the next one.